Good afternoon, sir. My name is Sanjeevni Patel. I'm from second year. Uh, when I, like I always have a struggle. I have a war between my heart and my mind while deciding anything. Like uh, there are some situation in which I ha like I. I have to listen to the society in which I have my loved ones, including my parents and family. So in such situations, sometimes uh, if I agree them, then I disappoint myself. If I agree myself, I kind of disappoint them. In both scenarios, eventually I get disappointed because I, e either I have made someone hurt or like all these war kind of happens in my mind and i'm never i'm fear like i fear that i'm hurting someone and if i'm not hurting someone else i'm hurting myself so i'm always confused like not exactly confused but like while taking decisions it's really uh, uh, a big task to <laughs> take a decision about anything so how to overcome this fear see it's not that uh, we are uh, afraid of hurting people We are actually afraid that it is bad to hurt people. Huh? Now, how do you know something is bad? How do you know something is good? If we can clearly know what is good, bad, loosely stated, what is right, what is wrong, that would uh, solve a lot of your problems. Hmm? You have uh, your examination sheets and your teachers assess you on that, don't they? Hmm? And when your answer is all wrong, how many marks do they accord you? Zero. Let's say the question carries 10 marks. How many do you get? The answer is junk. Pure trash. How many marks do you get? Yeah? Zero. The teachers are evil. They hurt you so badly. Don't they? Don't they? Please tell me. Don't they? Huh? Today the election results are out and yesterday we had another one being declared. Three states, three different political parties. The electorate is ruthless, heartless. See how it hurts. One constituency, there were 34 candidates. 33 returned hurt or you could say retired hurt only one one am i right am i right uh, why are we not calling the entire electorate as heartless hmm? why are we not because they are doing what is right and when you do what is right, it is okay. If someone gets hurt, it's not your problem. Your problem is when you do not know what is right. There are two parties fighting a court case. Are both of them going to win it? Please tell me. No. So the judge must be a pretty sad person. No? See how he keeps hurting people day in, day out. First of all, he is judgmental. Uh, the judge ought to be judgmental. What else can he be? And secondly, he keeps declaring one party huh, as wrong or bad and he even throws people into jail. Hell, he even sentences people to, to death. So, 
what do we do we condemn our judges do we why see how vicious and violent the judge is he just sentenced somebody to jail or to the gallows you die that's what the judge is saying these must be pretty bad fellows no why are they not bad people why are the judges or your teachers or the entire electorate why are they not bad people please tell me they are doing it right because they are doing what is right and if that hurts that hurts only those who deserve to be hurt and such hurt is not punishment such hurt is supposed to be a means of self correction are your teachers spiteful angry vengeful that they give you zero marks when you do it wrongly what do the teachers really want that you that you improve now what happens if you get 10 out of 10 where you deserve zero what happens you deserve zero but you get 10 because the teacher is trying to be soft and accommodative loving you know what happens if the teachers start doing that please tell me i'm glad i never had such teachers mine were extra strict they gave me 5 even where i deserved 8 so i had to do something extra to get even 6 or 7 i am indebted to my teachers what happens when you start getting 10 when you deserve zero please tell me please tell me our hard work stops eventually you know that's what we do to all our loved ones in our relationships we stop showing the mirror to them we start saying because these are people near to me therefore i must shield them from hurt the more you shield someone from the right results of his or her actions the more you have actually harmed that person one way in fact one of the best ways any person improves is by facing the consequences of her actions and her being this is the way you are therefore you must face such consequences karm phal but we don't allow that to happen we interfere with the very law of action the kid has done something extremely bad the mother is still trying to side with the kid and defend the kid the kid deserves to be censored right punished but what's the mother doing what's the mother doing please tell me there is a little bit of a of a scuffle hmm a brawl involving some of your friends so on one side there are two of your friends and the other side there are two three strangers and you happen to reach that place which party do you side with quickly please tell me your friends do you even bother to investigate which of these parties is on the right side do you no your first instinct will be to support your friends and that's where we go badly wrong support rightness support rightness remember your central scripture shrimad bhagavad gita if even your brothers teachers relatives loved ones are on the side of evil you have to fight them that's what shri krishna is constantly telling arjun fight them 
And you're not fighting persons. You are fighting a flawed principle. It's not those persons that you are firing at or shooting at. You are fighting the flawed, wicked principle that they stand for. But we don't do that. Parents different kids and kids different parents. And in the process, a lot of nonsense keeps cooking. You remember the father of our friend Duryodhan? What was he doing all the time? Huh? The entire kingdom, the entire country, even the animals everywhere knew that Duryodhan was acting wickedly. Right? There was only one person in the kingdom who didn't see that. Who was that blind one? Dhritarashtra. And he was like, oh, how can I, how can I hurt my son? He has some legitimate aspirations, some teeny weeny things he wants. A little bit, you know, like the, like the crown, the throne, like the control of the entire country. Only this much he wants, you know, some little toys. How do I break his little heart? The same thing happens from the kid's side. Now that we are referring to Mahabharat, that also reminds me of what is stated as one of the fundamental reasons that led to the Grand War. There was this son who decided to defend a very ordinary kind of desire his father expressed. So there is the king and the king has seen a fisherwoman taking bath and he gets enthralled. He says, I want to marry her. Now the fisherwoman Satyavati is smart. And her father is actually shrewd. So they say, you know, even if she gets married to you, you know, how will she ever uh, become uh, the dominant, the powerful queen? Because from a previous marriage, you already have a son. And the name of that son was? Bhishma. Ah, Bhishma. Then he will become the king. So the father goes and tells the son, you know, son, and the son is already grown up. And the father has been enamored by the young fisherwoman. Son, I, I want to have that girl as your new mother. But she says that you will become the king. So, you know, can you help me out? So just like most of us here, he says, because my parents want something, they should not feel hurt. A grand oath he takes. And what does he swear? Bhishma Pratigya. We still use that word. What does he say? I'll, I'll never accept the throne. I shall always be a guardian to the throne, but never an occupant. But the girl is still not satisfied. She says, you know, he might not become the king himself, but he's already so grown up. Very soon he will marry. Maybe he'll marry after his father does. And then he'll have sons. And they will become claimants to the throne. So Bhishma again, to defend the father, says, I swear that I will not marry at all. So no question of any kids, therefore no question of any competition to Satyavati's 
would be kids and this kind of molly coddling led to the war in which in numerous people died that's when you try to defend your relationships too much that's when you try to not hurt your kids your parents your friends your brothers your sisters your husband your wife he wants that how do i deny it come on it's not a question of whether or not he wants it it's a question of whether or not it is the right thing rightness must take precedence over relationship can you remember this please what is right is more important than anything else in the world else you will have mahabharat like wars again and again over and over are you getting it hmm on one hand you should not be afraid of accepting when you are on the right side of things be humble be truthful be polite and be brave if you know that you are misled wrong simply accept it equally if you know that others are insisting wrongly on something improper never yield never succumb yes obviously truth does hurt but when truth hurts someone it is not your fault fold your hands bow your head down and tell them i know you are feeling hurt but that's neither my intention nor my action neither do i intend to hurt you nor have you been hurt by my action what hurts you is your own inner falseness and i am not responsible for that there are a few things that every person must only individually bear nobody else can take care of that if a father is standing for something false the father alone will have to bear the consequences and when the father is bearing the consequences the daughter cannot be responsible so the daughter has to simply say you know i know you are feeling offended but i didn't do that it's your own doing i can only request and pray that you improve yourself as much as and as soon as possible and if i can be of any assistance any help in the process of your improvement obviously i am available a lot of uh, evil in the world is only because we are just too afraid of hurting falseness and somehow this tendency is found more in the so called good people if you are a nice chap you will be reluctant to hurt someone but if you are reluctant to hurt then unintentionally you will find yourself siding with the evil which side did bhishma fight on in the mahabharat war the wrong side imagine fighting against krishna why because you're a nice chap what is going on i'm a nice chap so what do i have to do 
I have to fight Krishna. What's going on? You want to land yourself in that kind of a mess? Where you have to find goodness itself because you are a nice person. How many of you have experienced this? Landing in a soup because you are a nice chap. And then we say, oh, you know, good guys finish last. No, good guys don't finish last. Ignorant guys finish last. It is possible to be nice, but ignorant of the truth. And then niceness will not help. You must learn to say no. And you must be brave enough to say yes. It's just that yes has to be said to the right thing. And no too has to be said to the thing that deserves a no. Unambiguously, you should be able to make the distinction. When you say yes, stand by it. Do not say yes too frequently. But when you say yes, live by it. And when you say no, don't feel ashamed of it. Some random thing has come to you and the fellow is begging you to say yes. Why must you feel pressurized? But because we are nice people, we just can't say no. You must roar out a no to all the nonsense. Unabashedly. Otherwise even your yes will not carry any weight. Yes carries any meaning only when you have said no ten times. And that must be the ratio. Ten no's and then one yes. Then that one yes has sacredness. Then that one yes is something you can invest, you devote, surrender your life to. Otherwise, you keep saying yes to all the little things and that does not mean anything. Are you getting it? Or do you want to be like Bhishma? Hmm? In your last days, what do you find yourself doing? Defending Duryodhan. And even then Duryodhan is constantly giving you an earful. Even in his last days, Bhishma did not get any respect from Duryodhan. And it was Duryodhan he was fighting alongside. You say you worship sacredness. Do you want to be aligned against goodness, Gita? Just think. Krishna is narrating the Gita to Arjun. And all this while, what does Bhishma find himself doing? Right in front of him. And he is a very, very respectable old man. He is a very good man. And right in front of him, there is Gita being delivered to Arjun. And what is Bhishma doing? He is readying himself with his bow and arrows. To fire at Krishna and Arjun. Such a sad scene from the perspective of the old man. Is it not? Your entire life has been one of righteousness, discipline, dharma. And in your last war, you find yourself devoid of the Gita. Not only are you devoid of the Gita, you have to fire against the process of the Gita. 
Is that not sad? Is that not really heart wrenching? Think of it. Do you want that to become your destiny? But that's what happens to most people who are just nice without being truthful. That's how most of us are. None of us are bad fellows, are we? How many of us are really vicious here? How many? Huh? The filmy kind of wickedness. How many of us display that? I don't suppose. You look pretty decent chaps, all of you. Huh? But most of us will finish our lives devoid of the Gita. When I say Gita, I mean goodness. Why? Because we are nice people. Therefore, we cannot say no to the Duryodhans around us. And it's these who are around us that hurt us the most. Remember, the war was not between strangers. The war was between family members. Often it is those who are related to you. By chance or by blood. They are the ones you need to stand up against. That's the real battle. That's the problem Arjun was facing. He was saying, how do I fight against my own kith and kin? Krishna said, nothing doing. Truth is truth. Dharma is dharma. If even your own brother is siding with evil, adharma, he needs to be not only fought, but actually killed if needed. You will not become a bad girl if you oppose nonsense. And nonsense is nonsense, irrespective of where it comes from. If it comes from within your own mind, it is still nonsense. Learn to slap yourself hard. Why should we not? Huh? And don't we see how this thing here is a great breeder of nonsense? How many of you disagree with that? The, it's, a, it's a nonsense churning factory, is it not? Huh? When that happens, don't support yourself. Hmm? Useless feelings, random thoughts, don't they just come and possess you? From within, please tell me, does that happen or not? When that happens, don't be afraid of saying no. And now you're saying no to yourself. So learn to say no to yourself. And when you say no to yourself, you find it's not very difficult to say no to others. Irrespective of how deeply they are related to you. In fact, your first deep relationship is with yourself, right? So if you can say no to yourself, it will become easy and possible for you to say no to others as well. And saying no is not a crime. You do not become a bad girl if you say no. A bigger problem is to be a nice girl away from the truth. Hmm? In fact, if it means that you will be called a bad girl if you side with the truth, be ready to be called a bad girl. Yes, I'm a bad girl. If being truthful means being called bad, I'm prepared to be called bad. But nothing is higher than the reality. Nothing takes precedence over the truth. That's what I respect most. That's what is sacred. Does this make sense? Hmm. Good. Thank you.